The emergence of bronze smelting and bronze vessels marked the time in which China entered a great bronze age that was to last more than 1,500 years through the Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties. And it was in this period of world civilization that ancient China began to make great advances. The bronze vessels discovered in China are first in the world in terms of quantity and degree of exquisite craftsmanship. Also appearing in the Bronze Age are the oracle bone inscriptions of the Shang dynasty found in the Yin ruins. These oracle bone inscriptions mark the beginning of the time in China from which objects and era can be identified by characters. Around 4,000 years ago, there was a massive flood across the land of China, the first large-scale natural disaster to be recorded in the history of China. Many people were killed, others deprived of their homes. In the fight between people and nature, there appeared a great hero named Da Yu, who led the people to harness the rivers and control the flooding, enabling the people to live and work in peace and contentment. Dayuda 可是在中国不是这样的,不是依靠神,也不是依靠别人,而是依靠自己的力量,就艰苦奋斗。Modern science has proved that at the end of the glacial period, there was indeed a worldwide flood on the earth, and that it was caused by the warming of the global climate. This great flood has become a remote memory of all peoples everywhere in the world. But the difference between the various fables and legends of China and those of other countries lies in the fact that the name Da Yu is clearly recorded in an ancient document and that he is closely related to the beginning of a nation. Because of his success in harnessing the flood, Da Yu became universally respected and was raised to the status of head of a tribal alliance that was the Chinese nation of the time. Eventually, he established the Xia dynasty, the earliest dynasty in China's history. 这个文明的形成的一个很重要标志是国家的形成是吧那么这个啊有了国家啊有了这个呃这个社会上的这种公共的这样的啊这个人与人之间啊有统治与被统治关系的这么一啊一种结构是吧那么这个从历史上来看这
内部我们发现，这个不仅发现了夯土的基址、宫殿的基址，而且发现当时已经有中轴线的这样一种布局。中轴线大家可以想象，故宫这种这种前后几座院落、几座宫殿的院落，然后呢有同一个中轴线这样一个，我们可以现在有把握的说，中轴线的这样一种理念，在夏代的后期，在二里头一直已经出现了。Bronze vessels, turquoise inlaid bronze plaques with animal face designs, and jade axes were unearthed from a number of medium and small-sized tombs. According to ancient records, Dayu divided the land into nine states, and after collecting bronze resources from all over the country, he had nine ding cast to represent the area of his nation. And indeed, a bronze ding was found at the Arlito site, and it is the earliest found so far. Was it one of the nine ding cast by Da Yu? Were these bronze vessels made by the Xia people? In the ten thousand square miles of the northern part, immediately there is a wall surrounding the area. In this area, we found large-scale bronze temples, found bronze temples, and also bronze temples. And this bronze temple was made by the Xia people. And this bronze temple was made by the Xia people. And this bronze temple was made by the Xia people. And this bronze temple was made by the Xia people. And this bronze temple was made by the Xia people. And this bronze temple was made by the Xia 主要是青铜容器，可以看出这些这个作坊在宫城附近的作坊就是为夏王朝这个王王室服务的。而且呢，出土这些青铜器也表明，这些青铜器就是在二里头遗址制作的。Around the 17th century BC, the Xia dynasty ended and the Shang dynasty began, and it is said that the nine ding made by Da Yu passed down to the Shang dynasty. Xia， 它的版图并不大。大体上相当于现在的河南的中西部和山西的南部，嗯，在整个中国，或者在这个时候文明已经呃正在形成这个阶段来讲，它只占一个小块地方。当时到了商，那形势就大变。商代的势力，相当于现在的中国的相当大一个地方。It is thought that the ancestors of the Shang people might have come from the ancient Dongyi nationality, and that later they mingled with the Huaxia nationality in central China. Culturally, the differences between the Shang people and the Xia people were not great. In the spring of 1983, just six kilometers from the Arli Tou site, archaeologists discovered the site of an ancient city with an area of more than 1.9 million square meters. The city, dated to the early period of the Shang Dynasty, 3,600 years ago, was built near the capital of the Xia Dynasty. It was built there in order to show the 3,000 or so smaller surrounding states that the Shang Dynasty lay at the center of the land. In ancient times, areas around the middle reaches of the Yellow River, located in the center of China, were known both as Hua Xia and the Central Plain. After the founding of the Xia Dynasty, the several thousand years of Chinese history that followed unfolded with Hua Xia and the Central Plain at the core. The Central Plain became a political, economic, cultural, and ideological furnace, while the broad-minded people of the Hua Xia Nation. Came to symbolize the strong power of cohesion and creativity of Chinese civilization. As rule over the land was consolidated and became increasingly stable, the Shang Dynasty built an even larger capital city 100 kilometers east of Yanchu. Today, that city is referred to as the Shang City of Zhengzhou. Half a century ago, archaeologists tried with limited success to reveal the secrets of the Shang city. But then, at the end of 1989, a farmer in Xiao Shuang Chao village, Zhengzhou, dug up a bronze object, clearly from the era of the Shang dynasty, that might have been fixed to a palace gate. A huge wooden stake had once stood on the base of this stone stele, and what it supported then would most likely have been the palace of the Shang dynasty. Also found in the Shang city of Zhengzhou was China's earliest porcelain, and it reveals that Shang people knew how to apply glaze to their pottery. 
They also knew how to use bronze and did so to create ritual vessels, weapons and tools for use in daily life and for production purposes. Among the items excavated from the Shang city of Zhangzhou was a large bronze ding. It is one meter in height and weighs 86 kilograms. People today regard these large bronze ritual vessels as a testament to the glorious achievements of the Shang dynasty. So Shang is a strong development of the Shang dynasty. So Shang has a great achievement in the Shang dynasty. The first one is the Qin Tong Tong Qi. The Qin Tong Tong Qi is a lot more than a lot. The size is more than a lot. 当然，铸造就更困难。它所存在的技术上的、艺术上的、宗教上的、思想上的这些意蕴呢，就更丰富。Around the year 1300 BC, King Pan Gong of the Shang Dynasty moved the dynasty's capital city to Yin, and Yin would remain the capital until the year 1046 BC. The ruins of Yin were referred to by a later Han Dynasty historian. But the location of the ruins was lost and remained a mystery for many hundreds of years. But then at the end of the 19th century, a farmer in Xiaotun village in Anyang city, Henan province, dug up some animal bones known as dragon bones, which he then sold to a drugstore because their value was far greater than his entire harvest of grain for a year. We don't know how many of these dragon bones were ground into powder to be consumed as Chinese traditional medicine, but it was not until the autumn of 1899 that someone realized their true value. That person was Wang Yirong, at the time a well-known antiquarian and epigraphist. While buying materials to be used in the preparation of some herbal medicines, he noticed some symbols carved into the bones he was purchasing, and that the symbols were very similar to inscriptions seen on items of bronze. He immediately bought all the dragon bones the store had to offer, and after carefully studying them, he concluded that the symbols they bore were characters that were even older than those used in inscriptions on bronze articles. The dragon bones were, in fact, oracle bones from the Shang dynasty era. Wang Yirong had made a major discovery, and with it, he became the first person to discover and collect oracle bones dating back to the Shang dynasty. But just where had these oracle bones kept secretly by dealers in such antiquities for so long actually come from? After years of investigation, another epigraphist, Luo Jian Yu, guessed that the oracle bones might have been unearthed from Xiaotun in the town of Anyang in Henan province. And so in the spring of 1915, Luo went to Xiaotun to carry out an investigation. Before long, he realized that Xiaotun was not only the place where the oracle bones had been unearthed, but that it was also the site of the capital city of the Shang dynasty. What he had found was the Yin ruins, as referred to by Han dynasty historians more than 2,000 years ago. Following Luo Jian Yu, famous scholar Wang Guo Wei carried out textual research on the names of the Shang dynasty kings and their lineage, as recorded in Sima Qian's records of the historian. He found that the records in Sima Qian's work agreed with the details carved on the oracle bones and tortoise shells. This proved that history records concerning the Shang dynasty were surprisingly accurate. Jia Gu in 1899年得到发现和鉴定,是吧?這件事情不但是中國這個學術上的大事,因為是全世界的科學史上都是大數特數的一件事,啊,現在這個世界的一些講文化史啊,這個科學史的一些書籍,是吧?都要記得賈古文
The discovery of the Yin ruins meant that a great gateway to the Shang dynasty that had been closed for more than 3,000 years had been reopened. But what kind of a world would be revealed as a result? These are the famous Yin ruins located to the northwest of the city of Anyang in Hunan province. Over a period of 254 years, Yin, the capital city of Shang, experienced the rule of more than 12 kings over eight generations. And here, the palaces of those kings and their ancestral temples have been discovered. So far, more than 70 sets of construction foundations have been found in the areas where the palace once stood, and they have revealed that the palaces of the city of Yin were more magnificent in terms of architecture than the royal houses in the Shang dynasty cities of Yanshu and Zhangzhou. They reveal the striking achievements of the Shang people in what was a glorious time in China's Bronze Age. The area of the Yin ruin so far revealed covers some 20 square kilometers. At present, archaeologists are excavating a road in the city dating back to the Shang dynasty. This road was nearly 10 meters wide, big enough for four carriages running side by side. Today, we can enter the halls of the city of Yin, the capital city of the Shang dynasty. Combining horses with carts was a great innovation in the history of human civilization, and it was one that accelerated the course of human history. The structure of a Shang dynasty chariot was very complicated, and the art and craft of making one had reached perfection. To kings, princes, and aristocrats of the Shang dynasty, possessing a carriage symbolized royal status, and owning a fine chariot was an aim well worth pursuing. This is the character for king. When it appears in oracle bone inscriptions, it means the ruler of a country, and it evolved from the character for battle axe. At first, the battle axe was used as a kind of practical weapon, but later it became a ritual article. So far, no more than 10 bronze battle axes have been found at the Yin ruins, and this indicates that only a few people could possess one. Shang dynasty troops were armed with what were at the time the best bronze weapons in the world. They wore bronze helmets and they wore leather suits of armor. Thousands upon thousands of bronze weapons have been unearthed from Shang tombs, including various kinds of bronze daggers and sharp bronze spears. It seems that every adult male had to be prepared to be called upon at any moment to become a lion-hearted fighter for the Shang dynasty. In 1976, Chinese archaeologists discovered a Shang dynasty tomb which, while not particularly large, was highly important as it had never been looted. Inside were thousands of burial articles including some 468 items of bronze of various types and some of the types had never been seen before. After removing stains and rust marks from the bronze articles, archaeologists could make out phrases. This one reads Si Mu Xin, Fu Hao, and Hao, indicating the name of the same person. Fu Hao was the wife of Wu Ding, king of the Shang dynasty, and her name appears as many as 250 times in oracle inscriptions carved on bones and tortoise shells. Up to now, the tomb of Fu Hao is the only tomb of a Shang dynasty royal family member found at the Yin ruins 
for which the occupant and his or her status can be confirmed, and it also includes oracle inscriptions. Not only was Fu Hao highly involved in the state affairs of her era, she was also China's first female general. Fu Hao is also believed to have been a beauty. She had no less than 490 different hairpins, enabling her to appear every day with a new face in front of King Wu Ding. No less than 755 articles of jade have been unearthed from the tomb of Fu Hao, and they include a jade bird, jade horse, jade tiger, jade dragon, and jade phoenix. All of them are lifelike in appearance and reveal that the aristocrats of the era domesticated many pets, including large animals such as the elephant and bear. An elephant pit discovered at the Yin ruins contained a small elephant with a bronze bell tied around its neck. Just one kilometer from the palace of the king in the city of Yin, there was a Shang Dynasty bronze foundry that covered an area of 10,000 square meters. Although numerous craftsmen worked in the foundry, only the king himself could make decisions about the dynasty's output of bronze, the varieties of objects made, and their scale. Shang Dynasty craftsmen not only mastered the bronze-making arts they had inherited from their ancestors, but also developed a unique combination of pottery moulds to make very large bronze vessels. They pounded sun-baked clay into pieces and mixed this clay with fine sand that contained a large amount of quartz. They then carved different designs on the clay and after drying the results became pottery moulds. Because each mould could be used only once, no two bronze objects of the same design have ever been found at the Yin ruins. Bronze objects were made by turning copper ore into molten copper, which was then poured into a pottery object called a general helmet. Sometimes this object was used as a crucible. Such small-sized copper furnaces have remained in use to the present day, the only difference being that today's furnace operators must wear a special face mask to protect themselves against the heat, as the temperature of molten copper reaches more than 1,200 degrees centigrade. The large Simu Wu Ding weighs 875 kilograms, making it the largest object made of bronze excavated anywhere in the world. To maintain a large-scale bronze foundry, great quantities of ore were needed. The bronze articles unearthed from the tomb of Fu Hao alone come to a combined weight of more than 1,600 kilograms, requiring at least eight tons of copper ore. However, so far, no Shang Dynasty mining and smelting base has been found near the Yin ruins, and this leads us to wonder where the ore came from. These beautiful small flowers called Hai Zhou Xiang Ru are also known as Tung Xiao grass, which means copper rust grass. They flourish on the sites of old copper mines. This place, more than 900 kilometers from the Yin ruins, is located in today's Rui Chang city in Jiangxi province. This lone wooden pole was erected by Shang people as part of the supporting frame of a mine more than 3,000 years ago, evidence of the earliest mining and smelting site in China. Tung Lu Shan, located in Daye City, Hubei province to the northwest of Rui Chang, is one of the six top copper bases in China. 
Here, the Shang people built tunnels that led to underground mines, and working underground, the miners chose rocks bearing malachite sparkling with an emerald luster and had them sent up to the surface by means of wooden tackle. Most of the copper resources needed to make articles of bronze for the Shang capital probably originated from the Tung Lu Shan mine. As the areas along the middle reaches of the Yangtze River possessed an abundance of such strategic resources, the Shang Dynasty King would certainly have strengthened his control over this area. So the Fu It is recorded many times in the oracle bone inscriptions unearthed from the Yin ruins that the Shang dynasty was once associated with southwestern Shu, which was far from Shang territory. Shu was short for what is today's Sichuan province, yet the state of Shu of ancient times is still wrapped in the mist of history. This place is called Sanxingdui. What remains at Sanxingdui is the remnants of an ancient city wall and the wall can be clearly seen. To the ancient people of Shu, the thick city wall and what it enclosed would have seemed like a fort. Today, it ushers in groups of uninvited guests who have heard that someone knocked on the gate of this wall and that it opened to reveal the secrets of an ancient kingdom. In the summer of 1986, several workers were digging through the hard soil with their hoes, none of them having any idea that mixed in with the soil were cracked pieces of pottery, broken bones, and valuable objects of jade. Soon, no one was allowed to use the soil to make bricks, and the entire block of land, once part of the ancient state of Shu, was under protection. The gate to a mysterious kingdom dating back more than 3,000 years was about to be opened in what would prove to be a truly sensational discovery. When the rammed earth and the excavation pit was cleared away, a miracle of archaeology was revealed. Unearthed at San Xingdui were a large number of vessels made of gold, the wealth of a king protected by troops of roaring tigers. These tomb guardians standing underground had fulfilled their duty to the kingdom for more than 3,000 years. This文化呢,实际上是在四川的这个城都平原这一带分布的实际上相当广泛的一个文化。这个文化呢,现在我想首先一个强调的就是它有相对独立的起源和它的发展脉络。这一点呢,是必须肯定的。The ancient and mysterious state of Shu had finally been found, and just like the Shang dynasty in central China, it had a highly developed bronze civilization. But who had been the master of the ancient state of Shu? The people of Shu had not left behind any written clues. This object, which looks rather like a steering wheel, gleams in its bronze splendor. Legend has it that the man who established the ancient state of Shu and became its first king was named Tan Tung. It is also said that he had protruding eyes and was actually called vertical eyes. However, people had never been able to imagine what these vertical eyes looked like until one day another sensational discovery was made. In 
Is this the image of a person or an animal? The appearance of this face mask made of bronze certainly startles everyone. Completely different in shape from those unearthed from San Xingdue, it has eyes that protrude as much as 20 centimeters. Can this be the legendary Tan Tong, the ancestor of the Shu people? Perhaps this is an image of Tan Tong made to protect the state of Shu he founded, a state that became another center of civilization far from central China. But if so, what did the ancient people of Shu use as the basis for this image of their great ancestor? In spite of the fact that a great many bronze statues had already been excavated from the ancient state of Shu, the last find greatly surprised everyone. A standing bronze figure 262 centimeters high. Such a huge bronze statue from this time had never been found in China or anywhere else in the world. The figure wears a high hat and his clothes are decorated with dragon and phoenix designs and various animal mask designs. But what was he holding so tightly in his hands? He stands with bare feet on a square-shaped platform that also bears animal mask designs. Who can he be? It has been surmised that this mysterious figure might well have been a king of the ancient state of Shu. Also unearthed from the San Xingdue site were many articles in the shape of birds, their elegant bodies reminding us of phoenixes in the sky. Legend has it that for several generations the names of all Shu kings were related to birds. One of them was called Yu Fu or Fish Mallard. We know that in ancient times China's tribes took the phoenix as their totem, as the use of this totem has also been seen in Da Wenko culture and Hu Mu Du culture. However, ancient documents from the Central Plain claim that the offspring of the kings of Shu were descendants of the Yellow Emperor, the great emperor of the Xia dynasty. If so, then the two civilizations developed in parallel. Naturally, people were greatly excited by the great San Qingdue discoveries. When this bronze tree appeared, a crane and wooden frame had to be used to raise it into place. Although the tree is broken at the top, it is still nearly four meters high, and archaeologists have called it a deity tree. The base on which the tree stands looks like a mountain, and the overall impression is that the tree growing out of the mountain is a heavenly tree. The trunk has three layers of branches from which hang fruit, and various flying birds stand on the fruit. In ancient Shu, people believed that high mountains and big trees were steps that led to the sky. Flying birds, meanwhile, were regarded as envoys coming and going between the earth and heaven, passing information. Scholars believe that the bronze tree might represent Fu Sang, a place inhabited by the sun god. Certainly it would seem that at the very least, the deity tree symbolizes the reverence accorded the sun by the Shu people. Shangdao 
是吧？你比如你看它那有磊啊，有尊呢、啊，啊，有各样的器物。这些个器物，你可以看有的和中原地区或者受中原地区影响的啊，其他的一些地区都有很密切的关系，差不多是一样。The bronze zuin and bronze lei and other ritual vessels unearthed from Sanxing Dui are very similar in shape and style to those from the Shang Dynasty on the Central Plain, and clearly, they originated from Shang culture. Dragons, so often seen in other parts of China, were also sacred in the minds of ancient Shu people. Scholars believe these bronze zuin and bronze lei indicate that a courtesy system operated in the land of Shu, and that there was a kind of peaceful cultural exchange with the Shang Dynasty. Archaeologists believe that the large number of bronze items and ivory items unearthed from Sanxing Dui may have been left behind by the ancient people of Shu after some important ritual activity or sacrificial ceremony. Let's imagine such a sacrificial offering ceremony of the ancient Shu people more than 3,000 years ago. The king is the chief diviner. His very power comes from the people's faith in him. Large amounts of regional wealth are concentrated here and used as sacrificial offerings to ancestors and deities. The sacred stateliness of it all amazes his people, but in a raging fire, the deity tree disappears and the king too vanishes. Eventually, the ancient state of Shu also dies away, and 300 years later, the character for Shu is found only on the oracle bone inscriptions unearthed from the Yin ruins. The appearance of these oracle bone inscriptions marks the point at which China enters a period in the ancient past that can be verified through characters. The文字发明是非常古老的. 啊，所以呢，文字的发明对于全世界来说都是最大的一件事情。The oracle bone inscriptions of the Yin ruins boast the earliest Chinese characters ever found, and these characters appear in places where sacrificial activities were frequently held by kings of the Shang Dynasty. Every day, the Shang king would ask a fortune teller to foretell everything: the weather, the harvest. Whether hunting would be good, or whether there would be victory in battle, all the foretellings that resulted from the reading of omens were recorded on tortoise shells or on the shoulder blades of oxen, and these became the state archive of the Shang Dynasty. The characters recorded on the tortoise shells and bones are referred to as oracle bone inscriptions. Mayo 但是呢，在欧洲，不要说这个两千年前，也就是像现在莎士比亚的一些一些一一些巨作，著名的巨作原文，恐怕现在说英语的人未必能读懂。这就是我们民族的文化能够延续，而且比较应该说完整的延续的一个重要的一个文化基因。The legend Tang Jie's invention of words familiar to all Chinese indicates that ancient Chinese people paid great attention to the origin of Chinese characters. As written characters are an indicator of civilization, the birth of characters announces the beginning of the history of human civilization. As the oracle inscriptions on tortoise shells and bones of the Yin ruins reveals, Chinese characters originated before the Shang Dynasty. 
The number of different words appearing in oracle inscriptions on tortoise shells comes to more than 4,000, and so far, at least 1,500 of these have been identified. Scholars now believe that the number of characters used by Shang people exceeded 5,000, and perhaps numbered as many as 6,000. It was a logical and mature character system, and as such, it made an important contribution to both Chinese and world civilization. Word 这个英语里头的一个这个word，不等于中国的一个字，中国一个字可以组成很多很多的词，有很多很多种意思。这个是不能够完全对比的。所以中国的这个呃这个字词呢，在世界上是最丰富的这个之一啊。那么呃，比起